previous video, we have already seen that how GraphQL is better than REST and how GraphQL provides an efficient and flexible endpoint structure other than the REST. I would suggest to go back and watch those videos first. The link is in the i button. Let us now see how actually GraphQL works. Let us see it practically uh, through an online editor. We will fire some GraphQL query and we will get a response out of it. By that, we will also get to know that how we can actually modify the query to get the details or the response which we want. Before going to that website, uh, let us understand some of the key points. So in GraphQL, there is only one endpoint which is exposed. And if we compare it with REST, in REST we have this HTTP verbs, right? Get for fetching the operation, post for uh, creating operation, then put for update and uh, delete for uh, delete operation, right? So these CRUD operations, if we see it in GraphQL terms, we have three things. We have query, we have mutations, and we have subscriptions. So query is basically related to all the get operations or the fetching operations. Mutation is related to create, update, and delete operations. Subscriptions is something which is related to batch process. So in if you see the restful world or a spring world, we have this spring batch process, right? Wherever a client is making a request, but they are not bothered about an immediate response. So whenever a response is available, that will be forwarded to the client. Make use of an online editor, which is provided by some open source community. So I'll just go ahead and type uh, graph QL audit, uh, editor online. Okay. And let's see. Uh, the second one you are seeing right look a uh, lucas constantino dot io just click on this one and you will say an interface something like this so i'll just get rid of this thing here and now i'm left with the queries so if you uh, see in the by default it has some uh, query written okay so as we know that right in graphql we have uh, three operations basically there is query mutations and subscriptions so query is basically similar to get call of a rest api mutation is like crud operation create update delete subscriptions is like uh, batch apis right or batch process so what i'll do i'll just delete all this stuff right now from here and i'll go to docs and we can see here that uh, this particular ed uh, editor provides a query mutation and subscription so we'll go to uh, query and i'll look what all query we can do we can do uh, query for all comments we have all file schema, all posts schema, all users schema and like that we have uh, multiple schemas uh, present. So what we can do, uh, we, will, we can basically start uh, with uh, all user schema. I'll just try to write some query to fetch user details. So I'll write query, so I'll write uh, all uh, users, okay, it will also give you suggestion on drop down and inside users what all i need so i want id of a user name of a user and email id of a user so i'll write id okay then then uh, name and uh, then email okay so this query represents this is a get request basically in terms of rest api rest nomenclature so this query will uh, fetch user details and in the response it will consist of id name and the email okay so let me fire it as you can see it has returned the response and uh, inside the data it is having all users key and inside this key we have an, an array of user list which each list containing the id name and email address of a particular user okay now uh, let me add some posts as well in here so for each post i want title then i want id of a post okay so let me invoke it so if i invoke i'll surely get a list of posts and uh, the title and the id so if i want to get the user as well uh, right uh, for this particular id what i'll do i'll just do id and uh, let's say name so what i want i want um, the user details id name email id the posts okay for all the users then inside posts i want the title of the post id of the post and which user has actually posted that so if i invoke it this is how GraphQL is effective, efficient and powerful, which we discussed in the first video, right? Rather than uh, REST API, which is uh, like uh, more of a complex kind of architecture in terms of uh, presenting the data to the client. Because here client wants, client has specified its needs, right? It, it has specified that I just need ID, name, email, post and the title and ID of a particular post. I don't want anything else other than this. So what this uh, GraphQL endpoint will do, it will read this query, it will run that, um, I mean, it will pass this query at the backend and it will just 
go ahead and look into the schema and we'll find out extract those details which is asked by the client and it will just return the exact same uh, data which was asked for nothing less nothing more so this is how graphql is more effective and powerful than a rest api so that's it for today's session if you like it please like the video and subscribe the channel